Welcome to Introduction to Engineering Design. Uh, this is module 3.5 and we're dealing with a little bit of uh, statistical analysis. So as you downloaded your activity here, we're going to do some applied statistics on a data set and then we're going to carry it forward to our little Skittles experiment that we did the other day. So starting out here, if we read the procedure, what we have is some data points from a manufacturing quality control testing. And we want to compute the mean, median, and mode, and then the standard deviation. We'll also want to compute the range. So I'm going to show you and introduce to you how to use Excel. So starting out, and we'll bring our data set back here in a second. If you click on the Excel icon, it may be on your toolbar, or you may have to click on the Windows icon and then type in Excel. But either way, We'll open up Excel. Once Excel is open, and I'll give you a moment, you can pause this video until you get it open. I'm assuming you have it open, just like I'm saying it, and you'll see in the uh, upper left tile here, it says blank workbook. Click on that. And it'll open a new workbook. And a workbook in Excel is really a series of worksheets. Uh, and each one of those sheets has cells arranged in rows and columns. So while we're opening this, uh, the value of using the Excel spreadsheet, or any spreadsheet for that matter, is we can put formulas into the spreadsheet, which will allow us to do repetitive computations over and over without making any mistakes and really take the focus away from the data manipulation and put it on the data interpretation. So we've got our spreadsheet opened up, and I haven't named it anything yet, but this is what I was talking about, about rows and columns. So you'll see that column or row, uh, let's start with column A, runs down, and it just goes down row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, just like that. And at the very bottom, you'll see we're on sheet number 1, and I can add sheets by clicking on this icon. So let's start out in column A and let's give, uh, let's, let's just move over a space from column A into column B and let's put a header of data. And in this header, I'm going to go ahead and type in the data points from my activity. So if I just type in 4.1, 4.1, 4, 4.1, 3.9, 4.4, 3.9, 4.3, 4.0, 4.2, 4.0, 3.8. Let's go back and count and be sure I've got these right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 data points and I have 12 data points there. Good. So it looks like I have all my data. <clears throat> so that's how I type in my data points. So I can put data into these cells. I can also put equations into the cells. And the way I do that is I put an equal sign before I in insert an equation. Before we insert equations, we learned earlier on that if we we're going to look for a mode or a median uh, in our data, it's nice to have it organized. So one of the ways I can organize my data is I can highlight just by clicking and holding and dragging my cursor down. I've selected all those cells and now what I can do is I can come over and go to my data tab, sorry, go to my home tab and I can sort these <clears throat> by clicking on the sort and filter icon up here. And I want to sort them from smallest to largest. You'll notice when I do that, the data all arrange themselves real nice. That'll be handy later on. Now one of the first things I want to compute from our problem is I want to compute the mean. And as you remember, the mean is nothing more than the sum of all my numbers divided by the number of numbers that I had. So let's start out with calculating the sum. Now there are a couple different ways I could do this. 
I could add individual numbers by using my equal sign, clicking on my cell, putting in a plus sign, clicking on the next cell, put in a plus sign, click on the next cell, and a plus sign, etc., etc., all the way down. You'll see in my formula I have different colors representing different cells. That's not a very easy way to do it. Excel has a much easier function to accomplish this. And what you'll see is this little summation symbol right where my cursor is. So if I just come over and put my cursor in a blank cell directly beneath my data and I click the sum signal, it will go ahead and grab that data and give me the net sum. Now another way I could do this is if I knew the data I wanted to add, I could highlight my data and click on the sum and it will put it right beneath it. So you'll see the formula appears sum and it gives the range of the cells that it works on. B2 through B13. So that's the sum. Now the mean is nothing more than my sum of my cells divided by the number of cells, which is 12 in this instance. So there's my mean. So that's pretty cool. Now that I've arranged these in this fashion, I can see that if I have a median, and I know it's an even number of data points, I'm going to come down and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I see it's 4 is the value for 6, 4.1 is the value for 7. So what I'm going to look at is what value lies between these two. And that would be 4.05. And I arrive at that by taking 4.1 minus 4, divide that by 2, and add it on to 4. So it lies halfway between. Now I can look for a mode also. And when I look at this, I see that I've got 4 occurs 3 times, and 4.1 occurs 3 times. So I'm multimodal or bimodal rather, and my mode is 4 and 4.1 bimodal. So I've answered those first few questions here. Now the range, I can come and calculate my range, and my range is nothing more than my maximum value, which is 4.4, .4. so I put my equal sign, click on my maximum value, subtract my minimum value, which is 3.8, click on that cell, and then hit enter. And my range is 0.6. Now, that's all neat and it's pretty simple, and we could do that by hand or in your head a lot of times. But now let's look at standard deviations. So we look at our standard deviation table. What we have to do is we have to take the data point and we take the data point, subtract the mean, and then we square that value. We then sum those values. So that's what I'm going to help you out with here. So one of the cool things about Excel is I can now take and say this equals to the difference between my data point and subtract the mean. And I can just continue to do that all the way down my data sheet. And I can show you some tricks in class on how to make this a little faster. Now I'll show you right now. One of the things I can do is I can name this cell. See how it's named B15? So one of the things I can do is name it. So I'm going to highlight in here, and I'm going to call this my data mean. And now what I can do is I can use that name minus data mean. And by naming it, I can just drag my formula down and it computes that. So you saw I could type the full formula in using the cell, or I could give it a name. So that's two different ways. So this is mu 
or x minus mu. Now this was going to be x minus mu squared. All we have to do is say this equals to d2 equals to c2 and use my up caret squared. So you'll see that formula equals c2 up caret 2. That just means to the second power. So now all I have to do is drag that formula down. So you see how I did that? I grabbed this little green button right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. I grabbed that little green button right down at the bottom, grabbed it and drug it, and it copies the formula. So now I've done all that arithmetic, or had Excel do it, and guess what I can do? I can now compute my sum again. Let me click my summation tab, and it does it for me. So there's my sum. So how do we compute the standard deviation? Well, as you remember from your presentation, and from your formula sheet, and I'm going to flip this open in case you're watching this at home and you don't remember this. But we just download our st our our uh, presentation. Maybe. There it is. And this is really a pretty good presentation to review if you're having a hard time with any of these concepts. So here's our standard deviation. Our standard deviation is the sum of the data point minus the mean squared divided by the number of samples. So look at that. We've already got all that data in there. So I can go back here and say, now my standard deviation equals to this sum divided by 12, which was my number of data points, and the entire formula, put parentheses around it, and then type the function for square root, which is S Q R T, square root. And there's my standard deviation of 0.16499. So that's using Excel to complete this data set. Now, if you'd like to, you can make a histogram using Excel as well. We'll talk about that here in a little bit of class, a little bit in class. Otherwise, you can just make a scatter plot or a dot plot uh, and uh, work yourself into a manual histogram. Either way will work. Hopefully that helped. That's the use of Excel to help you with a little bit of the arithmetic behind doing the statistics. Thanks for watching.